duo. We have the outgoing Senate Minority Leader, Len Fasano of North Haven, and the likely incoming Speaker of the House, Matt Ritter of Hartford. Uh, Senator Fasano, I got your hometown right, correct? It's Yes, that's right. Okay, phew. Want to make sure. Uh, thank you both, <laughs> thank you both for, for joining us. Kevin, you want to start us off? Sure, Representative Ritter. I just uh, got a text telling me that the Democrats appear to have won the seat being vacated by House Minority Leader Themis Claritus. Has it been that kind of night for the House Democrats? Um, the mouse cat? There is no mouse pad. Uh, Kevin, um, sorry about that. A little uh, technical difficulties here. Right. But um, we, we believe we've won Mary Willander's seat. Uh, Mary Willander has won that seat from the former minority leader. Um, we can also confirm that we have won the Avon Canton seat, Letty DeGraw. Uh, we won a Fairfield seat, uh, Jen Leeper. Uh, and it looks like we have won a Waterbury seat as well against an incumbent. So for now, we can confirm about four swings to the Democratic caucus, and we think there's another three or four we'll be able to announce in the next 15 minutes. Have you lost So any? all in all, we will definitely pick up seats, yes. Have you, have you lost any? Uh, we, we have. We, we, we lost uh, one for sure, or two for sure. Uh, one is we lost Berlin, where the outgoing speaker right. was. Uh, we kind of expected that. Uh, and right now, we're, we're having some tough results in a, a district in Tolland, Ashford, and uh, out there in uh, Wil Wilmington, which was held by Pat Phine Phineas Wilson. All right. Uh, Senator so Fasano. If, you, if we had to guess, we think we'll be up between five and 10 seats okay. at this point in time. Yeah. That's a big range. Uh, Senator well, Fasano. Uh, it is. I wish I'd be more specific. What Sorry. kind of night is it, uh, is it for the Senate Republicans? Well, um, I think that uh, we're having an okay night. We're still waiting for some results. I think uh, Gennaro Bizarro might have some difficulty retaining his seat as it stands now. That's the, um, that's the New Britain seat. That's right. That's seat. Um, you know, that's a very tough seat to ha to get, an extraordinarily tough seat to hold on during a presidential election. So, so I think that proved some problems with that seat. Um, on so Senator Logan is hanging in there. It's another for us. Uh, the absentees may prove too much, uh, particularly the one absentees. Coming out of Hamden, once again, a presidential election uh, in this difficult time. So I think those two were having some difficulty with. Um, there was some talk about Paul Formica out in the New London area. I think he's going to be fine. Um, there was a tough race with Kevin Wickos. Um, I think that that is he's leading right now. The AB is going to be counted. I don't think there's enough to overcome that seat. So we've got two in jeopardy uh, on a pickup side. Milford, I think the coattails of Stryker are proving to be uh, very helpful uh, in Milford for our candidate, uh, Southwick. But we're not sure uh, when that final result will be in. He's leading on the machine. Last count I got was about an hour ago or 45 minutes ago. And he was up by 3,000, which is wow. quite a bit. But there's absentee bit. ballots still to come in. So that right. may be a surprise pickup for us. Uh, but we'll still have to wait and see. Um, my seat, uh, fortunately, did stay Republican, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, Paul Ciccarella did win my seat um, oh. handily, so that's very good. Congratulations. Representative Ritter. Thank um, you. What, what's your sense of what the legislative session could, could look like come January, given COVID? I mean, look, where we are today, and by the way, hi, Len. How are you, my friend? Um, it's, uh, look, it's, it's going to be challenging. If, if you Good, how you Mr. Are, Speaker. <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm, I'm doing fine, Len. Um, it's going to be challenging. And so, look, the first thing that I think the state should know is election nights can end today or sometime early tomorrow, and we will immediately get to work on a bipartisan basis to figure out the rules, right? I mean, I mean, Kevin, you know, you served. The rules are a big deal. They sort of get waved off, right, as, well, it's the rules. It's, we do it opening day, but that's going to govern uh, 2021. And I think it's fair to say that right now, I don't know how you have public hearings the way we've had them in the past. I, don't, I just don't know how you do that until there's a therapeutic or a vaccine or rapid testing 
that allows for us to feel more confident with people entering the building. So it's going to be a challenge, but I can assure the state of Connecticut, and I'm sure uh, the Republican leaders can as well, that we'll get to a bipartisan, we'll figure out how to make it work, but will it be normal? Probably not till 2022, if I had to guess. I know a lot of lobbyists are concerned that they're not going to be able to get the ears of legislators in the, in the halls of the Capitol. So um, uh, they will be uh, eagerly awaiting how you work that out. Um, Again, it helps to make it bipartisan, right? Because I think at least you can say we're just trying to keep people safe. But we get it and we want to get people access. And thank God technology is a lot better than it was even five or 10 years ago. That does help a little bit. Sorry we don't have, have more time to talk to the two of you. We're, we're headed up to a, a network break. But thank you both very much for joining us on a very busy night. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks. much for having us. Thanks you both.